I pulled this clip about Russian honeybees from a Stream Team Live beekeeping chat we did with Gus Mitchell on April 20th, 2022. Great information. Hope you enjoy it. I like Russian honeybees. I think Russian bees um, exhibit a lot of mite resistance. Uh, it's a program. It's one of the very few breeding programs in the United States anyway that is a real program. Um, most of your guys, they say, oh, I have such and such breed. I have XYZ type of bee. And that's what I raise. And they're one breeder with a couple hundred hives, if you're lucky. Most of them probably have a lot less than that. Um, some of them may have a lot more. You can't you operate a breeding program with that few colonies. So the USDA introduced, they, they, they broke everything down into 18 lines from what they imported from Russia. Uh, I think right now we're running 16 lines. We've lost two of those, but... They developed it. The, they sent these bees out to the charter members of the Russian Honeybee Breeder Association. And then they helped create an association that could steward these bees. Um, and that's still going today. Uh, the only comparable thing right now is Dr. Harbo's program, where he has a cooperative program with the uh, VSH Queens. I think Paul Stevens is part of that. Yeah. Um, it's a cooperative and you can't continue to make progress and monitor things uh, the way they need to be done without a program like this. Um, as far as mite resistance in Russian bees, you know, this is require requirements uh, to be a member of the association. You know, you have to submit your your results. You have to test certain ways. You know, they, they do DNA testing, of course, but um, it's, wow. a, it's a performance based program. Mm -hmm. And you run a Russian-based bee, but I've always heard Russian bees were more tend to two things. Number one, be more quote-unquote swarmy, and number two, be a little bit more nasty, a little more, more feisty. Which so uh, tell us about those. What you think about that? I'm more. I'll address swarminess first. Um, so one of the things that I had to get used to dealing with Russian bees is that Russian bees do more with less bees. So if you're used to running Italian type bees or any other kind of bee, uh, you're used to seeing a population at this level to, to have this stage in the hive. This is when they're at uh, swarm prep, or this is when they're at capacity to swarm. Right here, I'm seeing these bullet over. You got to remember with Russian bees, they do way more with less bees. They will shock you in the spring with how little bee coverage that there will be over full slabs of brood. How they do it, I don't know how they're just amazing with that. Um, they make more honey with less bees. They're, so naturally they, they will swarm before your mindset that is used to Italian bees uh, would think that they would swarm. So I think that's the problem. I don't think that they're more swarmy. I, I really don't. Um, they're just more they're efficient. Just more they, efficient. Yeah. They are more efficient and they do things with less bees. They winter smaller. They build up really fast. Um, lightning fast Interesting. so uh, you just have to kind of watch and keep an eye on them now another thing with russian bees is they keep they keep queen cells all the time uh for me i don't worry about them queen cells unless they're capped but open cells they'll have them they have one in the chamber all the time uh, they're really oh. these bees don't hardly go queenless they they always correct themselves uh, it can make them difficult to requeen with uh, other genetics if you were trying to do that. But they're they're really good about staying queen right. Uh, they're really good about surviving in general. Uh, I think they're very productive, very industrious bees. They they just like to work, and they do more with less bees. So that's that's the swarming part. As far as hmm. attitude, attitude ties in as well a little bit with swarminess. So. Uh, Joe Blow down the road can raise carnies, uh, and this other guy in Ohio can raise carnies. Uh, they could be from the same original parent stock, but these are very different bees. Why? Because of selection process. So you have a dozen different members in the Russian Breeders Association. These breeders are going to have different criteria. We have a couple that are large commercial operations like the Koi's. Uh, they, they do almond pollination. They do other pollination. Uh, they run around 12,000 colonies, I think. So naturally, uh, the bees that they're going to select for in their program, what, what they like better, uh, are going to be more broody than what me as a stationary beekeeper is mm -hmm. going to be selecting for. 
it, it all fits within the criteria of the program. But what I'm getting at is it depends on the breeder, not necessarily the type of bee, but who bred the bee and what their selection criteria is way more than are these Cordovan or are these Russian or are these Carniolian or Caucasian? You know, it, th there is a certain amount of traits that you expect them to have, but uh, it really boils down to the breeder and their selection criteria, what they're selecting for. And talking with Jose and even my buddy Josh down here across, the, I mean, they are always working on trying to have better genetic traits as far as like all the things you've mentioned. And it's, and, and I think Corey talked about this a little bit in that there is no such thing as a perfect, there's no such thing as a perfect bee. You know, there's always trade-offs. Like mm -hmm. you may have all the right genetics you want, except they might be a little more feisty. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever. They may make a lot of honey, but they may not, there's different things. And so the goal, I think in all breeders, I'm sure yourself included is to, is to optimize the traits that you want in your bees. And yeah. that's what everybody's trying to do. And so. I have guys ask me why, when they ask me, what am I selecting for? And I, I never say gentleness um, because it's a given uh, for me. Uh, nobody wants unworkable bees, but it's not on the top of my list because that's just kind of a given thing. You got to have workable bees. And it's so hard to set traits, guys. It's not something that you can say, I want this and this and this and this, and I'm yeah, going to have it sure. all together in one bee. I mean, it's really hard to, to have your cake and eat it too with the bees. So for me, the number one uh, most important trait is, is mite resistance and survivability. Uh, bees that, that can tolerate viral loads and tolerate mites. Um, so that's number one. And uh, second for me would be honey production. And then I really prefer gummy bees, what I call gummy bees. I like a lot of propolis use because I think that... Uh -huh. I think propolis use is um, something that has been selected out of bees for a long time by commercial beekeepers uh, just because it was inconvenient. But I think that's been a detriment to honeybees. Uh, there's lots of studies looking into it and some have results available now, but uh, propolis use, I think it, it has something to do with how they tolerate viruses. You know, it's antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral, all kinds of, of stuff. Uh, it's really crucial to hive health. So I select for heavy propolis use. And it also really uh, impacts hive beetle population because my bees corral them up. Uh, I got inspected by the Arkansas State Inspector the other day to get my health certificate. And he wanted to know what I was using to kill beetles because he hadn't saw any beetles. Uh, you know, and at this point, you know, he'd been through 50 colonies. So it's just heavy propolis use. I have one of mine specifically that you can see when you open it up as compared to the others that there's probably two times the amount of propolis. Mm -hmm. Are they healthier? They're a good size colony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how about my um, loads of things? Um, I got to do my washes yet. But yeah, you guys up north, they're just coming out of winter, man. Yeah. They're just, they're just oh, yeah. doing their hives. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Poor Brian, man. He'll go in there and then like they'll have two weeks of nothing of ice on the ground. It's like that. Gus, oh, Gus, we had snow two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Leave them, leave them alone. <laughs> leave them alone. But um I really I really like propolis in, in the bees. I think it's just uh it's really important. I, I'm really starting to see some results from selecting from that. Um uh, I've been taking a lot of pictures and, and sending to a buddy of mine that way, but uh, I'm starting to see some, I mean, just crazy amounts of, of, of propolis in some of these these colonies. Yeah. So it just tickles me pink when I see that. Uh, uh, Carl Sledge said, if you lived in Russia, you'd be tough too. You know, one thing about Russian honeybees that I don't like is their name. Uh, they're from the Primorsky region, but these bees are an accumulation of, of bees from Ukraine, uh, Armenia, uh, Macedonia, uh, outlying areas near Russia where they pulled people in and sent them to the Primorsky region to cultivate that area. And they brought their bees with them. Uh, that part of the country is like right at Korea. Um, it's, it's really close to some Asian countries. And because of that, these bees have been experiencing Varroa mites for way longer than any other 
uh, type of European honeybee. But um, they're they have some Russian step bee in them, but they also have um, you know the European black bee, you know Malefra Malefra. They have the Armenian honeybee, uh, Carpathian, and uh, oh Lord, all kinds of stuff. I was just reading a, a very interesting study uh, on it, but they're fascinating bees and and. Oh yeah, Caucasian, of course. Yeah, they have a, they have a considerable amount of Caucasian in them, which are very trendy right now. 